And welcome in on this uh, Thanksgiving Friday here as uh, we've got plenty going on across the sports betting landscape, including a ton of college basketball here. And that's uh, that's what we're going to help break down for you guys. Take a look at some of these games on the slate full card today. College football, uh, even mixing an NFL game, NBA, NHL. We got a little something for everyone here, but plenty of college hoops. It's already started here today, and we're going to take a look at a couple of big game breakdowns. We're going to have three best bets for you as we move along the show, and we'll do it, of course, with three of the most profitable at wagertalk.com when it comes to college basketballs. We welcome back in Jeff Michaels in the house. We also have the man, Adam Trigger, ready to go, no doubt. He is going to come up with a couple of fantastic, very popular plays here for us today. And double R1L, Steve Merrill, he's ready to go here. So let's kick it off here, gentlemen. We'll start it off with you, Jeff Michaels, as we've got no better place to go than uh, with the Ohio State Buckeyes here as they're getting ready to take on Alabama here. A little SEC Big Ten action going on, but... Uh, I don't know. It doesn't feel like this is the same old, same old Ohio State team. What are we looking at here in this one? Yeah, you know, Ohio State, couple big games, obviously, this weekend. But we're going to stick to the basketball court here for today. But taking on Alabama, like you said, top 20 team there in Bama. And despite being a neutral site game down in Florida at Raider Arena, Definitely a closer game for Bama than it is for Ohio State traveling all the way down there. But, you know, I really think all eyes are on this Alabama offense. You know, we know that Oates and the team likes to push that tempo, no question. But honestly, that's really not the only reason I don't think that they're putting up 102 points per game. You know, Mark Sears has been huge. He's third in the nation already in offensive rating out of the guys that qualify. But you look at the numbers that this team has put up. They're number one in the country in effective field goal percentage. They're top 12 in offensive rebounding percentage. They're getting to the free throw line. They're shooting one free throw for every two field goal attempts despite the fact that Ohio State's actually been pretty good at not fouling. But Alabama's number one in three-point percentage and number seven in two-point percentage. So it really doesn't matter what stat you look at. This Alabama offense has been impressive. And then you add in the fact that they're one of the fastest-paced teams in the country. Obviously going to see some scoring from them there. But, you know, the things that don't correlate into that aspect, really, they're 15th in bench minutes and they're 13th in average height right now. They got five guys that are playing that are six foot ten or taller. And that depth is huge for a team like this that's going to push that tempo because there's really no slowing them down. You know, they can pull guys off the bench. They can go as deep as they want and they can push that tempo for the entirety of the game. And I really think that that's going to be the downfall for Ohio State here. You know, Ohio State's offense has actually taken a small step back in comparison to last year, but their defense has improved a little bit. You know, if they're going to have a shot at this, they're going to have to continue not to foul. And they are one of the better blocking teams in the country, but... I still have to side with Bama here. They've shot 51.5% or better in all four of their games. They've won and covered all four of them. And they're out-rebounding opponents by 16 boards per game. Not to mention Nate Oates 19-8 and eight against the spread in the month of November. So doesn't slow things down to start. He keeps it hot both in tempo and in ATS records. So I'm going with Bama here to to take down and cover the spread against Ohio State. All right, a little too much SEC there. So Bama taking on to Ohio State, leaning towards Bama in that one as we welcome in Adam Trigger, who's been holding on to this game for a while to break down for <laughs> us here as uh, Canisius is certainly going to be looking at Wofford and being like, who the hell are you? Uh, but tell us here, Trigg, it's an intriguing matchup 
uh certainly from i think a total perspective not only but uh, also a side perspective so which way are you leaning in this one yeah joe so i want to do this one big game breakdown because these two teams are going to play a couple times this weekend so this is a it's part of a multi-team event up in canada it's actually in quebec uh, i believe it's in the building where the canadians um uh, ahl team plays in laval um first really quick trip for canisius it's canisius is right over the canadian border so they're probably the, the closest team geographically of any of these teams that are going to play uh but one very important thing to know um if you're going to bet this game is that taj Tavesky for canisius is likely out um so i talked to a good contact that i have um it, close to some of these mac schools uh Stavesky, of course did not play against cleveland state he did not play in the non D one team that they blew out the other day. Uh, but I'm hearing it's kind of the, the injury that cost him most of his freshman year. And I, I don't think he's going to be back anytime soon. So that's kind of like the key here. I think you need to know that because Canisius without him, it is just not nearly as appealing uh, to bet on. I think, you know, Canisius is a team I talked about a lot prior to the season. I thought Stavesky was the hidden value sort of within that Canisius team. Uh, because I really thought that he was going to be one of the top guards in the MAC conference this year. So now I, I feel like Canisius, it's not to say that they're bad or that they can't, you know, win games without him. I just don't think the hidden value is there anymore. And, and you know, right now it's still so, so soon that I think I'd be more willing to go against them until, until him being out is truly baked into the line. Now, can you go against him with Wofford? Um, that's, that's kind of the question here. I thought about it, but this Wofford team plays zero defense. That was the knock on them last year, Joe. They didn't play any defense. So you're talking about total. I mean, they were a sieve last year. They, they were bottom 10. They were bottom 10 in the country in two point field goal defense. Um, uh, that's, I mean, for a team that wasn't that bad in the SOCON that played their way into like a decent finish in the SOCON to be that horrible defensively um, it is it, it, that that's something that jumps off the page to me. Um, I thought, you know, we'll see, like it might change this year. They had a coaching change coach got dismissed last year. So the intern or the interim coach was Dwight, uh, Dwight Perry. He is going to be the, the head coach. It's his first year as the, the permanent head coach, 35 year old guy. That's a profile. I like, I like to play on, you know, that the younger and energetic head coach that kind of gets a chance. Uh, but what have we seen out of the gate, Joe? No defense. High point. Yep. They give up 98 points to high point. They win that game, though, 99-98. Um, you know, they covered against Tennessee, but I think that's one I'm willing to throw out because Tennessee is really not equipped to, like, blow teams out. That's not really their MO. The Vols are trying to, like, defend and and you know, that's, it was really never in question. They won the game, you know, Tennessee won that game 82 to 61. So just because they didn't cover 30, it, you know, it was still a, a, a you know, a, a performance for Tennessee in the second half where they just pulled away. And then of course, Virginia Tech put on 98 on them the other day, 98 to 76. So sounds to me like Wofford hasn't fixed their defensive, you know, sort of inefficiency from last year um, with those three results. So that's, I guess, the question in this game, because I really would like to bet Wofford knowing that Stavesky is going to be out here for Canisius. I, I haven't checked the live odds yet. Like right, you know, an hour before I got on the show, it was, it was a pick. Um, I know it started to creep up. It was minus one some places. I would imagine when these lineups are announced, it probably goes to something like Wofford minus two. That was what Stavesky was worth against Cleveland State. Opened seven and a half, went off 10, uh, and it landed 10. So that's the other thing I want to make clear here for Canisius. They've got a roster that can battle. Dinkins has been good. Um, uh, the CM, who I can't pronounce his last name, kind of stepped up in that game um, for Cle against Cleveland State, and Canisius didn't play that bad. But you're not going to get the offensive performance without Stavesky out of Canisius that that maybe you no know, you you would expect. Uh, and that's what I noticed from the Cleveland State game. Uh, the offense didn't look nearly as good. So. You're talking about a Wofford team that's expected to score. Maybe you can go with an under here. Uh, I, I would lean toward Wofford, Joe, but it didn't make my client card because I'm just not – there's too much unknown with this Wofford team. First-year head coach, a lot of new guys, and then, of course, coming out and giving up 98 to high point is a concern. 
Uh, but those are my thoughts on these two teams. I think if I had to lean in, in a direction, I would lean under just because I don't think you're going to get quite as clean, uh, crisp offense from Canisius with, with Stavesky out still. Uh, but again, take that info because these two teams are going to play additional games this weekend. Might be a spot to jump in and fade Canisius at some point. Um, if I had to do it, if I had to pick this game on the side, I would just roll with Wofford. I, I need Canisius to prove that they can win without Stavesky before I, I start backing them again. All right, good stuff there. We had the total has crashed from 148 and a half down to 145. So that uh, seems to be where the market is leaning as well. Still a pick and price uh, across the board there with Canisius and Wofford. That's coming up at 430 Eastern time tip here today on this uh on this what is it uh friday uh, <laughs> edition here of the college basketball tip-off show we've got a black friday nfl games uh which uh, i'm still scratching my head at so a uh, little something for everyone here today and merrill uh you've come up with a pretty interesting game too here you're gonna break down we're gonna head out west um, we're going to take a look at uh, Pepperdine, speaking of no defense, taking on New Mexico. So what are you looking at in this one here coming up later today? Yeah, battle of two uh, fairly big-name coaches. You got Lorenzo mm -hmm. Lamar, of course, uh, former Washington Husky coach. He was actually the Pepperdine head coach back in the 90s. Now he's come full circle. He's back at Pepperdine. And, then, of course, Richard Patino, Rick's son, is at New Mexico. And, you know, I went against New Mexico a few weeks ago here on the show, and that was a good spot to go against them. I thought they were playing slow down, half-court uh, St. Mary's of California, and I gave that out here on the show to everybody, and that was New Mexico's only loss of the season. They've been pretty good otherwise, and that's because they do like to play fast, and they'll get their preferred tempo for sure tonight against a fast Pepperdine squad who also play fast. In fact, Pepperdine's middle of the pack this year. They're like in the 160 tempo rating. I think that's very misleading, though, because last couple of years they've been one of the fastest teams in the country. Both of these teams are in the top 20 in tempo last year. Same head coaches, uh, so I look for a track meet this evening. Um, the early money has come in on both New Mexico and the over in this matchup. I would agree with both of those moves. Uh, totals as high as a 160 now in a lot of spots. Uh, probably not high enough, though. I think both teams go up and down the court. Open 157 up to 159. Uh, I think it'll close in the 160 range. So I like the over here. But I also like New Mexico. Open minus 9, now up to minus 10. When two teams play a similar style, I always like to play the better team, especially in a fast-paced game because the points aren't at a premium like they were in a slowdown half-court game. It was a bad matchup against St. Mary's of California. New Mexico's only lost, but they bounced back with three straight wins since. Meanwhile, Pepperdine heading the opposite direction. Uh, they won two easy games as a double-digit favorite um, a couple weeks ago against Long Island and UNLV. Oh, I'm sorry, against Lafayette and Long Island, two mm -hmm. of Adam Trigger's favorite schools. But then UNLV, Irvine, and Indiana State They've been a dog in all three of those games, and they've lost all three outright uh, by eight points or more. And I think they lose this one by double digits. Fast-paced game. New Mexico's better at both ends of the court. And a high-scoring game as well makes it easier to cover the minus 10 tonight for the Lobos. All right. Legging it with the Lobos here tonight. Should be an entertaining one here out uh, west. But if you're interested in a lot of the other uh, big Big name schools head to head this uh, the coming up this weekend, whether it be in college basketball, college football, uh, week 12 in the NFL. Uh, we've got you covered here at Wager Talk TV. So if you're new and joining us for the first time here, welcome and go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button here because nobody provides uh, more content here with the games throughout the season than we do here. So become part of the family. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and of course, get notified and have access to all of the head-to-head -head matchup videos as well as more best bets across the site. Now, speaking of best bets, we've got a few here we are going to dive into on the slate of games coming up today in College Hoops. And we'll go right back to the top to Jeff Michaels, who is going to take a look at NC State and BYU. I believe that's in Florida, if I'm not mistaken, or it could be out west. Uh, but uh, what do you got going here? We are, it might have been in Arizona, actually. What is going on with this one here? BYU seems like a freight train that nobody wants to get in front of. Can NC State hang with them here, getting six, six and a half in this matchup tonight? Yeah. You, you had it on one of those, Joe. We're headed out west, headed to Vegas, actually. Michelob Ultra mm. Arena out there. But 
you know, you said it. Can they stop them? How about the fact I made the the football reference earlier with Ohio State, but this BYU basketball team has already had as many wins in the Big 12 conference in their inaugural season as the football team pulled off in 11 games. So obviously they're transitioning into the role. We're playing non-conference games, so we're not quite playing that Big 12 schedule yet, but a 5-0 and start for this BYU team is, is definitely something to look at, including a nine-point win against San Diego State as just a three-point favorite. So big win there on the card already, but I have to back this BYU team to continue this role. I mean, you look at what they've done. They're top 20 offensively and defensively in efficiency rankings. They got two guys in the top 15 offensive ratings individually, and they've shot the three point. They their three excuse me their three point percentage is over 38 percent. Granted, 43rd in the country may not be a number that quite stands out as much as a top 10 or top 20 number, but you look at their breakdown of their shots, they're taking almost 49% of their shots from beyond that three-point line, and they still find themselves in the top 50 in three-point percentage. So not only are they throwing these balls up from beyond the arc, they're making them. And on the other side of the ball, I mean, they're top 10 in defensive efficiency. Sixth in effective field goal percentage allowed. They're number one in the nation in three-point percentage allowed at this point. I mean, they're a rebounding machine on both sides of the ball. They have the depth. They have the height. And they're 17th in returning minutes, too. So there is some experience there to be had with this BYU team, obviously. And, you know, really the only saving grace for this NC State team is the fact that in this game, they've scored a majority of their points from inside the arc, shooting two-point shots relatively frequently. And while BYU has allowed a higher percentage of opposing points to come from inside the arc, it really just has been because they've been that good at defending the three-point ball and that good at preventing opponents from getting to the free-throw line. So it's almost by default that they've allowed so many two-point shots and the, and the distribution has gone that way on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, this BYU team is looking like one of the, the better all-around teams when you look at them from both ends of the court. And laying six and a half here, I'm back in BYU against NC State tonight out in Vegas. All right. Well, listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I think Arizona State's trying to figure out uh, what the hell uh, truck that was that just ran them over there. That would be BYU, uh, in fact, in a absolute ass whooping last night. There or early this morning, depending on uh, what uh, when you watched it. But uh, BYU and NC State getting ready to do battle out in. Vegas, so should be a good one there. Also should be a pretty good one here with Trigg, who no doubt if you thought uh, Wolford and uh, Canisius was an exciting battle, wait until you get a load of Lehigh taking on Providence and getting what? Almost three touchdowns here. Uh, Trigg, what are we doing with uh, with Lehigh in this one? Well, Joe, I am on the road today. Obviously, we've got. I'm, I'm on day two of two with Thanksgiving, and so this is my own. This is my only play for today. And because I didn't really have time to write it up, I said, you know what? I'm just going to come on the College Hoop Show, give it out for free. It's Lehigh plus 19. It's a four percent play for me, and I've got a couple reasons why I really like Lehigh in this game. So I was at in the Bahamas with a bunch of our friends last week, Joe, at the uh, Bahamas Championship. Providence was one of the four teams I got to see play. And I, I, w- I left with a couple of takeaways. One, I was overall impressed with this Providence team. I thought if they played Kansas State 10 times, they'd probably win eight of them. But two, the game against Georgia, um, the guard play was really sloppy. And, and there's a reason for that. So Jaden Pierre did not play in the tournament at all. And Garway Dual mm-hmm. was suspended for punching a Kansas State player um, in the K-State game, suspended for the Georgia game. Now. Uh, Duol, my my Providence source is telling me that Duol is probably going to play in this game. 
but they're they're most likely going to hold out Jaden Pierre uh, until which I think their next game maybe against Rhode Island. Um, if either of them are out, I would still think that 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 it hinders the Providence backcourt a little bit because I got to be honest, I was really I thought the guard play was very sloppy against Georgia, and I thought Providence was was quite fortunate to cover against Georgia. Um, they it, Georgia was neck and neck most of the way. And it took a late little spurt. And then it also took, um, you know, Noah Thomason missing a wide open three for Providence mm. to cover that game. So, you know, I have reason to think that Providence might be a little bit overvalued based on that performance if they don't have their, their starting backcourt back. The other reason I really like Lehigh here is because Lehigh has really good senior veteran guards. Um, that, you know, as far as the Patriot League goes, and and after seeing Colgate the other day, I think Lehigh might have more of a chance to win this league than people think. I think this is the second best team in the Patriot by far. I don't think it's close. I think they will be Colgate's main competition in that league this year. And if the reason for that is going to be Tyler Whitney Sidney and Keith Higgins, who are really like just solid upperclassmen guards who take care of the basketball. I went to the Lehigh Col- uh, Cornell game and that was one of my big takeaways was, you know, Cornell can really pressure teams. That's a very good basketball team, in my opinion. And those two really didn't crack under pressure at all. It, as a matter of fact, Lehigh was, was the better team in that game in the first half. And they just went cold in the second half. They didn't really turn it over. It wasn't Cornell's, you know, pressure that got to them. It was the fact that they just, you know, kind of struggled to, to hit shots. Um, now, you're talking about a game like this. Do I think Lehigh comes out and wins? Probably not. But this is a team that's already covered against Penn State and North Carolina and and had really kind of played good for stretches in those games. So I think Providence, if you're going to tell me that that Pierre is is likely out, which is which is what I think is going to happen, even if Duall plays the freshman that that got suspended for the Georgia game, I still think that like the backcourt was shaky enough where these two guards, Higgins and Whitney Sidney on Lehigh, can hang with them. And, and that is enough of an edge, Joe, to take 19 points. Because remember, winning by 19 is tough. Like, you really have to, like, smash a team to win by 20 or more. And this is a Lehigh team that is not a bad basketball team by any means. And they're, they're going to contend in the Patriot League with Colgate this year, in my opinion. Uh, so I took the points. Lehigh plus 19. Uh, I think this should be closer to probably 15, 15 and a half. This is a good Mountain Hawks team. And I think they're going to turn in a performance they can be proud of uh, in Providence tonight. And I think they will get the money. All right. Looking for them uh, to get it done. Getting a whole lot of points there. And why not? This is exactly what this time of year is all about there. So Lehigh plus 19. And I should have known Merrill would have gone to the Lemoyne Bank in order to be able to get us a best <laughs> bet here tonight. I, uh, I am shocked. Not shocked, Merrill, double R, one L, that you have pulled out maybe the game of the night. Taking on Pacific, that would be our Lemoyne Dolphins here. Big fan uh, of the show, uh, of this school here. We love this here, Brian Power, uh, you, uh, Trig, big fans of Lemoyne. And they're an underdog here. And am I reading this correct? Are you leaning with Lemoyne in this one? First of all, you said it exactly right. They're an underdog, and I'm leaning. Leaning would be a great way to describe it. Uh, definitely not a best bet. Look, I'm, I'm passing at college hoops today on Friday. I've got a strong best bet for college football tonight. Also, a strong NBA best bet tonight. A nice 2 0 sweep lined up for this evening. So I didn't force anything in college hoops, but I had to talk about this game for a couple of reasons. First of all, Brian Power's not here. Poor Jeff Michaels has no clue what he's gotten into because Joe Ranieri, Adam Trigger, myself, and Brian Power have been back in Lemoyne all season not backing them but talking about them but i do think this is a spot actually where we can back the dolphins that's right it's a new york syracuse based team that's the dolphins and thanks to adam trigger i know why now um it's actually a religious (laughs) symbol from the early 2 ad Uh, more about that on future episodes but yeah this game was interesting it caught my eye and i know joe ranieri you woke up this morning after your thanksgiving hangover at 10 a.m you saw that steam move on steam move on lemoyne got all excited and i had to talk about the game LeMoyne got heavy, sharp action this morning. This line opened as high as 15, 14 in other spots, 13 and a half, quickly down to 12, 11 and a half around 10 a.m. Eastern. Currently sitting around 12. We're seeing a little bit of a buyback to 12 and a half. 
So I dug a little bit deeper, and I do think there's some cases you can make for LeMoyne. First of all, who is LeMoyne, you ask? Well, they're a new Division One team, and they opened against Georgetown back beginning of the season, a fast-paced Hoyas team. They got blown out of the gym. Then they had to play slow down Villanova. So obviously it was a very difficult uh, start to their Division One season. Uh, they've turned things around a little bit since, though. Uh, playing SUNY CA, beating them by over 50 points was a nice break after Georgetown Villanova. And they've gone two and one against the spread their last three. But the most notable one was the Cal State Northridge game earlier this week on Tuesday, in which they won outright as a 14 point underdog. And I want to talk about that one because Northridge has a new coach this year. They played really slow the last few seasons. They play fast now, they're one of the fastest teams in the country. And obviously, that worked for LeMoyne. And uh, Pacific also plays extremely fast. So I think they get a favorable matchup here to trade points. And Pacific is a terrible shooting team. That's why they have to play fast. Uh, a couple of metrics I look at to know if teams can shoot or not. Three points, obviously, but the free throw line also. Pacific shoots 62% from the charity stripe this year, 29.5% from three-point range. Um, so yet another reason I think LeMoyne can keep this game close. They can trade points, run and gun. LeMoyne plus the 12, 12 and a half, a sharp money move earlier this morning. And I actually agree with it. And I know Adam Trigger and Joe Ranieri and Brian Power at his Black Friday sales agree with it as well. Absolutely. I mean, listen, we love this LeMoyne team. One of these, uh, you know, uh, mid, mid, I don't even know if you consider it mid major, uh, but they are certainly, uh, they're mid. Uh, <laughs> they hope to be least. one day. Uh, <laughs> but they uh, but they certainly show up and show out. Great over team, and they keep things close. They never stop. Got to love that. So uh, you also got to love it. You just heard Merrill mention it here. In honor of uh, what is going to be quite a uh, quite a weekend here, we uh, from uh, at Wager Talk offering you the opportunity from today through Cyber Monday, you get a 90-day all-access package here for less than 47 bucks a week. That's three months, every sport, every pick from your favorite handicapper, whether it be Jeff Michaels, Adam Trigger, or Steve Merrill. You try it, you get it all for less than 47 bucks a week. Three months of all access. Uh, wishing you and your family a very ha uh, happy and safe holiday. But uh, it starts today and it goes through Cyber Monday. So make sure you visit their page. No code needed. Uh, it is available at uh, everyone's page over at wagertalk.com. So there you go. We got some uh, big game breakdowns. We threw in a little Lemoyne, Canisius. Uh, you, I mean, we got a little something for everybody here today. And I bet you didn't wake up going, you know what? I, I want to know a little more about the Lemoyne Dolphins. All you need to know is about cashing the ticket. And that's exactly what's going to happen here today on this Friday. Crazy stuff going on all weekend long. We've got you covered. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Make plans to come back and join us again all next week. But we're not done. If it's head-to-head -head matchups, uh, you're looking for information on upcoming uh, games. Well, we've got your best bets and everything you need to know about this weekend's games. Just click on that video on your screen right now and then come back and join us on Monday for another week here on Wager Talk TV. Good luck. We'll talk to you again soon.